So here we are in Logic Pro and I've got a really basic project open here. I've got one drum loop, I've got a couple bass loops and I've got a couple synth loops. So I'm just gonna play the drum loop with this synth and let's give it a go. Okay, pretty basic stuff, right? So what I wanna do is every time that kick drum hits, I want to duck that synth. So you get that ducking effect. So the first thing I need to do is I need to get some MIDI going. I wanna sort of extract that kick drum in the form of MIDI from this drum loop. So to do that, I'm gonna select the drum loop and I'm gonna go up to track and I'm gonna to go to replace or double drum track. And it has opened this window here and you can select the instrument. So I'm gonna leave it as kick. I'm gonna leave it as doubling. I don't wanna replace the original drum loop. I still want that just in case. Well, actually I do want it for this project, right? And then you've got the relative threshold. So if I open the MIDI region for this drum replacement, so I'm just gonna click on it, press E on the keyboard. And then if I move the threshold, you'll start to see more MIDI notes being populated because it is now being triggered by more information. So the higher the threshold, effectively, the less MIDI notes you're gonna have. So what you wanna do is, in this instance, I just want the kick drum and I only want it to, I want the kick on every beat, basically. I don't want the, the accents of the kick as you get towards the end of a bar. So I'm gonna drag it up until I get sort of that even amount of kick drums. So when I play this now, in fact, you can click on preview in the dialog window and you will hear just what I mean. And to stop the preview, you have to press preview again. I pressed the uh, space bar hoping it would do and it didn't. So the actual MIDI section itself, I'm gonna solo that now and play that to you. So it's automatically selected for me a, an acoustic kick I'm not bothered by the kick sample it's using because I'm going to mute it anyway when we do the ghost kick process. So I'm just going to play this now. Okay, it sounds pretty good. And then when I preview it again, what I'm listening here for are sort of flamming where it's slightly out of time, but it's it's quantized anyway. It's, it's, a, it's a tight drum loop, so it sounds fine to me, but I'm just going to preview it again anyway. I keep pressing space to stop it. <laughs> Force of habit there, muscle memory. You've got to press preview. Uh, trigger note, I'm going to leave to auto. It selects it for me, but you can see when I click on this drop down, you can select any one of these notes and you can see from sort of D uh, sharp zero, as it were, and onwards, it's triggered to a particular sample. But I'm going to leave it on auto because it's selected by the instrument, I'm led to believe. And the timing offset, you can change that. So if you are experiencing Flam, you can do the timing offset and it will move the notes, but you could just leave it as it is and then go and quantize it in the editor window anyway. Uh, but I can see I've got an extra note there. So I'm gonna drag up, there we go. I've gone to minus 4.4 dB in terms of relative threshold. And now I've got a nice even amount of kick drum samples here. So I'm just gonna press okay, commit that. I don't need this uh, window on the left here. And now I've got my kick drum. So this is gonna what I'm gonna be using for my ghost kick.